Hey, hello, everybody. It's, uh, it's me. <laughs> uh, and who else could it be? <laughs> but sometimes I wonder, you know, if there's another me inside of me. And so is this the real me or another me that maybe I need to get to know better? <laughs> could be that this is not the real me. That the, that, that the actual me is like the first personality that I have. And then the other me would be the second or the third personality. Um, but how do I know if it's the real me or not? I just can't say. Of course, I could just listen to that tune by The Who over and over and over and over again. I think Ozzy Osbourne did a really good version of that song too. But nobody can play the drums like Keith Moon. Uh, Neil Peart was the closest guy. Billy Cobbin was pretty darn good. I just think that he needed a little help with, with style. Billy Cobbin, I saw him in, in concert with Jack Bruce, and whoa, talk about a, a rhythm section. <laughs> Holy moly. Billy Cobbin and Jack Bruce, man. Well, Jack Bruce and Ginger Baker wasn't bad. <laughs> and Cream, they weren't too bad either. Whew. I was lucky enough. To, I saw them in concert on their farewell tour. tour. Farewell to what? To, to more records and more money. <laughs> Or <laughs> actually, they're they're going to more records and more money. Anyway, so today is um, uh, June twenty eighth, twenty twenty three. Twenty six years ago, it's June twenty eighth, nineteen ninety seven, and it's a Saturday. And little did I know, my life was in the process of being changed. Uh, it's just incredibly. So we'll see. I, I get heartstrings uh, being pulled this time every year because it was such an amazing transformation for me. But um, that's 26 years ago. But I remember, man. I remember clearly. And, and it was just, at, at, at 46 years old, I was getting a new career. So it's just incredible. Um, so it is uh, very humid. Uh, we're having uh, some weather patterns coming through that are giving us water from the sky, a good amount of rainfall. And um, nothing wrong with that, even if you get too much, you know, it, it, we sh we haven't figured out how to manage too much water yet. It's just mind-boggling, you know. you think that we would have figured that out by now, but it's not that big of a priority. What are you going to do? Mm. I got to notice I have to move <laughs> from my landlord yesterday. I have to move by the end of the year. So, you know, in a way, I, I just wonder if that's a divine... <laughs> intervention but I wrote a letter this is uh, the end of June July 1st is this Sunday I wrote a letter in the beginning of May about how awful the infestation problem uh, is in that building and that the uh, exterminator the drugs or the drugs the uh, the chemicals that they spray killed my first dog who, who was my one of my best companions in my whole life and she was incredibly cute and affectionate and they killed her now I have this little guy, Harvey. Hey, Harvey. And I am super precautious and careful about that those stinking chemicals. So anyway, uh, they're they're giving me the heave ho because I'm I'm complaining too much, I guess. And I don't. That's fine. It's, it's they're doing me a favor, really. That's really what it is, as far as as far as I'm concerned. I mean, it would be four. I don't want to be there any more than four years. It's one of those things. Like UPS, when I was working for them, and I got into the third year, and I, was, and I just looked around and I said, what the F am I doing here? The idea was to, for this to be a stopgap measure, give me some cash and me and my children medical benefits for part-time work, which is the hook that UPS uses. Part-time work, you get full benefits for you and your family. They're the only ones that do that. But the work is unbelievable. <laughs> so 3 o'clock in the morning to 8 o'clock in the morning. Oh, get up at 3 o'clock every day and see what that's like. I'll tell you one thing that affects what you do the night before. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I looked around there and I thought, thought, you know, I've made no progress. I've been here three years and I've made no progress. And if, if, if your uh, trajectory, your career trajectory is flat or uh, ineffective or flaccid, change it, man. And I did. I instantly, I walked off the job at UPS, and that led to my getting a career at Bell. <laughs> there was a lot of crazy shit that happened between leaving UPS and getting into Bell. But it took like seven months. And it's impossible. 
It was a miracle. And now I'm wondering if God is uh, looking over me right now, getting me out of this place. Because this, this place is, is, a, is a goddamn nightmare with, uh, you know, the infestation problem they have. And it's... Uh, <sighs> so... Fundamentally, they're doing me a favor, but it's fear of the unknown. You know, like I don't know where I'm going to live. I, don't, I really don't know. I don't. I don't want to give up what's in my IRA because I, it, I'm pretty close to having a breakthrough moment there, and uh, I wouldn't want to have to take money out of there to go to go get another place. But hey, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do what I have to. You know, whatever whatever it takes. I got to be smart about it, but at the same time getting out of this place and getting out of out of out of Coatesville <laughs> there there I met some nice people there but I, this this place is just it's fine they're doing me a favor you got to go where I don't know my ex-wife wanted me to move in with her <laughs> and that that's as insane as it can possibly get my moving in with my ex-wife oh man it's getting warm here definitely humid so uh, uh, yeah and I'm on the outs with uh, my friend Bruce Berman man what a pain in the ass he can be my god he's never wrong when, when he's talking with me if he's if he's talking to one of his heroes like Jeff Birkin or somebody like that you know he's like a lap dog basically anything you say man you must be right you must be right well I hope I hope Birkin bought a lot of Boeing <laughs> through the max incidents I don't wish anybody failure, but you know, I, I just don't like it being rubbed in my face. Anyway, so uh, you can see how humid it is. Let me just point the camera out. We've got a lot of ground fog. Not fog, it's just ground humidity. If you can see that. Uh, VFR though, and I don't see any ceiling at all. Uh, and it's nice, it's like 70 degrees, 70, 71 degrees, really nice. But you can see if you can see the sparkling water droplets on the uh, you know on the growth on the field there it tells you how how wet and humid it is around here you can just see how green everything is when you see a landscape that's green there's a lot of water and that is how uh, Elon Musk addressed the objections to the Berlin plant from the Germans <laughs> Germans man. Uh, they said oh you your plant, your automotive plant, they, they just didn't want anybody to compete with their automotive companies there, BMW, Mercedes, Audi, you know, all the Porsche. They didn't want the competition. Well, they got it. Thank goodness. But, um, there's plenty of water. So Elon Musk said, look around all the trees. It's so green around here. There's plenty of water. Plenty. And he's right. Go to the desert. You want to see where there's a water shortage? Go out west, man. Go to California, Oregon. Washington gets rain, but like, you know, Montana, if you're in Montana during the summertime, you better be on your toes because they they have wildfires there that, that, they, that are voracious and consuming, you know, uh, fields of grass, dried out grass, dried out shrubbery, man, boof, the Man Gulch fire, that's a famous one, Google it. I think there were six, eight, eight firefighters killed there. Like in a, in a, in a moment, the, this, the fire 